All right, now turning back to the Maryland Zoo, they have long worked with elephants for Africa on conservation projects for African elephants and their habitat. Yes, yeah, so Marty, he is live there and he has much more on the nonprofit this morning. Hello, Marty. Amy, Meg, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Let's welcome to the show, Dr. Kate Evans. Elephants for Africa, you joined us during the break. And we were talking during the break how Mike began the discussion about this project in Botswana, which I want to I want to finish this discussion, and then we'll backtrack to Elephants for Africa. Talk, it, it's fascinating. Botswana is a huge place. It is a huge place. It's about the size of Texas, but it only has 2.4 million people. So because of that, many, well, one reason, it has a huge plethora of wildlife, and elephants being one of those. And in fact, it's home to the largest remaining elephant population in the world, about 130,000. So it's really, really important, but with that comes a cost. And at the moment, we're seeing what we're calling recolonization of the landscape. So elephants that were shifted north by man are now sort of recolonizing for various ecological changes. And uh, what we're trying to understand is why. What's this push, push me, pull you of elephant movement within that landscape? And so with the support of the Maryland Zoo, we'd be put on uh, 10 collars on adult male elephants and we are being able to follow them to see where they're going and hopefully identify uh, long term where there are important key feeding and drinking areas. And we're also learning about environmental concerns, global warming, how it's affecting animals and humans alike. It was not just a check being scratched and here, go do some work. It's staff from the Maryland Zoo of Baltimore also helping. Absolutely. So we've got a long-term partnership here going, and that's key to us. It enables us to um, carry on our work. You know, we're not there just for a snapshot. Um, my philosophy when I started Elephants for Africa was I'm there for the long term. There for the elephants, but also importantly for the rural communities. And that takes investment and it takes partnerships and trust and uh, trust within the partnerships, but also importantly trust within the communities. It's truly amazing. Every time we come out to Maryland Zoo and Baltimore, we do, we do cute, cool things, but we always bring up this worldwide outreach and you're hearing it, and we're talking about it forefront this morning. Mike was telling us, and you can expound on this, we've got about 30 seconds. Elephants have a sense of smell greater than a dog. Uh, well, yeah, that's hard to quantify, but yeah, they have an amazing ability to smell. I mean, look at them. They've got massive noses, massive ears. What does that tell you about how they perceive their environment? And their, their feet are very sensitive. Incredibly sensitive. Now there's new research showing they can pick up infrasound from the ground, and that's one way they communicate by verbalizing, um, and they use infrasound, but they can pick it up with their ears and also with their feet. The elephant. You know, they're cute, we get it, but there's so much more, and the Maryland Zoo of Baltimore is on the forefront of work with Elephants for Africa. Hey, thanks for joining us. It's a You're awesome. We'll be back next half hour with more on this. Beautiful, sunny fall day from the Maryland Zoo at Baltimore. Back to TV Hill.